appreciate everybody for jumping in. I really do. Late night grind for your mind. You're tuning in to the All Nation Show. Let's go. One way or another. Shout out to all of the HBOs, share games out there too. I see y'all. Let's go. Mama told me it'd be days like this, right? Shout out to you, Chuck. Shout out to you, John. I see you, Gorilla Kado. Hey, Zeus in the house. J. Lombardi. Let's go. The Royals, the Faithful. James and Things. I see you, fam. Let's go. Pop it up, pop it up. Come on. Y'all tell them. Y'all already know. You tell them. Shout out to you, Jessica. One way or another. Tell them. Oh, come on. All right. They said, ain't no party like a cowboy party, huh? Come on. Watch out, jump in. Hey. Ho. Come on. All right. Let's go. All right. Hey. All the 88 cutlets out there, right? Keep them white walls clean, baby. Let's go. My name is Law Nation. I'm your host for the night. We're going to have a good show. We're going to talk about some signs. The small minor moves, right? It's the little things, right? It's the little things that can get things going in the right direction. And Cowboy Nation, we're heading just in those spots. And I know, I know the antagonist or the pessimist will, will be saying, Ah, Law, you said that last year. Matter of fact, you said that the year before that. You said that the year before that, right? <laughs> but uh, we, we still got to maintain, right, Cowboy Nation? And I give y'all some objectivity. As you see in the thumbnail, I have uh, Patrick Surtain, and then I have uh, the Joe Horn kid. Uh, well, J.C. Horn's, you know, it is Joe Horn kid. Well, J.C. Horn. You know, I got those guys. Uh, and, and I, and I should have put Ashante Samuels in there because he had a wonderful day as well. Right. And it's not how you start is how you finish. And none of these guys are guaranteed to be a sure lock. Right. It's, it may be somebody that we never heard of and never thought of. Right. Right. It could be just that somebody that's undrafted wake up into the realities of this world and say, man, this is all I want. All I want to be up there in the Hall of Fame or all I want is to host that Lombardi trophy to the sky. You know, I'm putting this on my mama, on my hood. You know, <laughs> I look fly. I look good. You know, so it could be one of those things. Shout out to you, Cedric, man. Thank you for sharing. Sharing is caring. I will say sharing is caring. And Cowboy Nation, we got a lot of sharing to do. So. With that being said, let me see if I can pull this up. The Cowboys decided to take a flyer at J. Ron Curse, who uh, is the nephew, from what I heard, uh, nephew of Javon Curse. So maybe, just maybe, after three to four years in the NFL, maybe this thing can start clicking over for him, right? And uh, it's a one-year deal. The detailing is not there yet. He's 27 years of age. Oh, I remember Oh, he's 28. He'll be 28 this year. Well, I remember when those 27, 28 years of my life, woo, woo, different story. 
And I don't want people to look at this kid and say, okay, he's the end-all, be-all. No, he had one forced fumble in his career and one interception. But why the Cowboys picked him up? Why, 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 why? I know I'm going to hear a lot of people ask that question, like, why? Well, you got to have depth purposes somewhere, right? You know, uh, in war, in the battlefield, you know, you got to have your troops out there. You know, the, the person in charge, he the one say charge. Now, he said charge by why everybody else is running, right? <laughs> towards the enemy or towards the opposition. So toward all of those things, what I'm saying is, Cowboy Nation, is that you got to have your guys that's going to be one of those assassins. And maybe he'll be one of those for us. A gunner, right? A guy that in a pivotal situation, uh, when I looked at the one interception that he got, it was when he was playing for Minnesota land, and, and it was a Hail Mary throw from Dak Prescott. You know, he saved the game. If he had not caught that interception, I believe, I think there was Jarwin in that end zone, or it could have been Schultz. The ball was going to hit them right in the hands, but he was in the right spot at that moment. It was destined for him to catch that interception. Right, and that's right, John. Appreciate you, Martin. Appreciate you for jumping in. They sleeping on them. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> who they sleeping on? <laughs> I can tell you, a lot of people sleeping on uh, J.C. Horn, uh, and, and I'm a little biased with it because I always been saying uh, from the start of the year, that's my one. That's my one outside of him and Caleb. And then when more and more details got out on Caleb, it was like ah, uh, it went from Caleb my one to. Horn is my one. Horn is my one. And I I want people to understand this. Appreciate you, Terry. I'm working on getting a gang of these headbands so I can send it out to everyone. Uh, maybe do a weekly giveaway or something like that. And, I, and I'll go into details. But for shout out to everybody who gave the stars, we will be doing a drawing on the Facebook group for those who gave the stars. You know, we'll be doing a drawing. Not for the headband, but for something else. Uh, Cowboy Nation, here's the situation. J.C. Horn, Ashante Samuel Jr., um, the, uh, the, the Patrick Sertain kid, all of these guys, all of these guys are within the same measurables of each other, not far as height or not far as like numbers or what, what have you, but, but far as numbers, well, you can look at those measurables in those aspects, but it's still predicated upon which team they go to, right, and how they will fold into a situation. And I'm believing that to me, to me personally, just to me, from what I can see, is J.C. Horn, he's a little bit more versatile. He got a little bit more jazz to him, you know. He got a little bit more mm to him. You, and that's what I see. Now, Sertain, the, the, the junior, He's like a smooth operator. You know, Joshua Whitlock, appreciate you, man, for jumping in. He's more of a smooth operator. You know, uh, he's more of a guy that, that, that should be a nuance within the system as it relates to which system he goes to. That plays a major role. How the coaching staff would see something out of them and elevate them. We don't know. For us, it could be got dog at me. Think about this. Richard Sherman, was he a first-round draft pick? Was he a second-round draft pick? Brandon Browner, I think that's how you say that kid's name. Was he a first-round draft pick? Second-round draft pick? Cam, ooh, Cam. Chancellor, was he a first-round draft pick? Was he a second-round draft pick? Do we have that same said coach on this particular team? Can he put his hands on these guys? Who who would think if, you know, think of, you know, that's how they say that little cliche. Who would have thought that basically, what if I told you like Ripley's, believe it or not, that Reggie Robinson could be the could be the ace boon coon next year. Shout out to you, Joshua Whitlock, man. Appreciate you so much with the hands of prayer. Appreciate you. We all need prayers uh, for your content, brother. Strong man pose. I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you so much, Joshua. Thank you so much, man, for the donation to help elevate this thing. 
And, and this this episode will also be uploaded on the Law Nation page. I really appreciate you guys for uh, helping that channel out and, and growing that channel on the YouTube sides of things. And it's just been uh, remarkable of of everything. And I'm going to get into the other details of what I'm uh, about to say. But coach, coaches coach, coaches elevate, right? So my thing is, my thing is the, the staff that we got and the staff that we had last year, Although they had a new system, a new philosophy, a scheme that they were trying to implement, the problem was they just didn't have time. And there's nothing wrong with looking at it and saying to yourself, yeah, they had a better toward, toward the latter part of the year. They started to showcase a little bit better numbers, but put the booty in there. It, it just wasn't enough to hold them, just wasn't enough weight to keep them. Official time for Christian Barmore uh, obtained in NFL scouts were 4.93. Big man was moving, six foot four, 310 pounds, second round gym. This is from Daniel Marshall. He's one of the scouts over there, man. I'm going to start, like, for those who just reach out to me uh, and send me stuff, I, I really appreciate you guys. It's all in my Twitter uh, for those who uh, who contribute to the channel, let me see if I can find it in these fashions. I, I really, 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 really do, man, appreciate all of those things. Like, uh, uh, let me see if I can do it this way. Uh, I really appreciate you guys uh, for, for helping out this, this thing and shoot me messages throughout the day. I, I really do. So if you're in my inboxes on the Instagram, I know they got the little block on the Instagram where – you know, you, you got to screen through the uh, the messages there. But when I do get a chance to screen through them, man, I appreciate it. And those on the Facebook group and as well as the Twitter machine, uh, I really appreciate you guys for doing that and helping me out. So, yeah, uh, what was, uh, since you got all that good stuff, Daniel, do you have Christian Barmore's, uh, no, not Christian Barmore's, but Alex Leatherwood's uh, stats? I would like to know Alex Leatherwood's stats because I I got him in the second round. If he can fall in the second, if we can go with defense or if we go with the defense in the first round and you still go with an Alex Leatherwood in the second, I want to know his stuff. You know, let me know whether or not it was one of those situations that he did a good job. Jay Versick, appreciate you. Man, you one of the guys too, man. They always hit me up. I really appreciate you. Don't they know that good signing – Makes Law Nation beer grows. Yes, yes. It let, it let make it grow, baby. <laughs> I shaved this morning, by the way. <laughs> uh, they they did put uh, a situation out there. Let me see if I can pull up my Twitter. This is my Instagram. Uh, Cowboys have engaged a contract negotiation with ex Falcon safety DeMonte KZ following his visit. Physical, I know you guys can barely see it, but you can go to my Instagram or my Facebook page to see this. And um, it's a clear sign that they may believe uh, he's on the right track for week four uh, Achilles tear, but no agreement as of yet. So KZ plan to remain to visit the Lions. Let me talk about this. I am not a reporter. Let me repeat. I am not a reporter, nor I'm a journalist, nor I claim to be a guy to have the inside knowledge or inside plug to things. I'm not that guy. And I would never try to lie to kick it to you guys. And and I try to be earnest. Every Every video that I've done in the last, I would say the last 30 to 40 days, I either read an article on it or I read something on it or I saw a video of it and I spoke my truths on it and I gave you guys my opinions. Law Nation, do not try. And I know I had to use the word, the operative word, try to clickbait you guys into things. You, I mean, you go through all of my videos, you would rarely see breaking news or alert. Now, there are some videos that I put breaking news on the front end of it, but I'm not breaking news guy. I believe in the hearts of hearts that the people that broke the news already broke it. And I just give you guys my flavor, my sauce to it, you know, my little jazz to it. But earlier in the earliest of the mornings, I said, well, the Cowboys plan to sign. That's the operative word plan to sign. Three players uh, if and I put the operative word if the medical is clear. Let me repeat. I put in the title, 
the Cowboys plan. You know, look, you only got so many characters that you got to put into the uh, title and you can't put everything in there. And even like for those who do any of the social media stuff, they got these little tags that will say, make it enticing. Put some sauce on it. Make it so it can be clickable. That's what they literally say. But I don't even do that. Most of my titles are so bland. The Dallas Cowboys. And then I put whatever the subject matter is. But what what really what really sullies the water is when people put fake news, clickbait, clickbait, clickbait. When it was literally in the title. The Cowboys plan to sign these three guys if the arbitrary word if medicals clears now I, I know that a lot of people the general public is not the smartest people in the world and i'm not talking about you guys but the general public in general just not the smartest people in the world right you know you got a lot of weird stuff going on but neither here nor there when you bring somebody uh, let me just use an analogy if i can't speak freely and, and see they plan on seeing i put this right here. they planning on you know giving this guy a contract and it's up to him to whether or not he will agree to terms i'm quite sure in the hearts of hearts they got a planned out contract for malik hooker who might sign not tonight but tomorrow he may be of the caliber that the cowboys might want to say okay we'll wait to the next day so that you can get everything in in line right so we can do a quasi or a mini press conference we want to get some views over here when we sign you and we got all of the trust in you and they will make a great storyline we can't sign you like the j-ron curse you know he, he, we can't do a press conference for him right you know but y'all just follow me follow me with this analogy fellas would know uh, 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 let me see what time it is i know it's a little late out here but it, you don't ask the girl the phone number for a phone number just so you can have it you ask her for her phone number so you can get the date and you don't take her out on a date just to say well we're just dating or invite her over to your house. And I'm trying to keep it within the lines of the borders right here. You have your intentions. Your intentions is when you ask her for, your, for her number. Is to get some, you know. Well, I ain't going to say it that way. Well, it's to get to know her, right? You know, so my thing is the Cowboys, when they bring a player in for a visit to clear their medicals, it's quite simple. One plus one equals two. When you bring a person in and you say, OK, we're going to go through all of this leaps and bounds, physical, medicals, their intentions right there to bring you in is to hire you. Their intentions, Cowboy Nation, is to sign you. So that's why they brought in KZ. That's why they brought in Malik Hooker. That's why they brought in a J. Ron uh, curse. And newsflash, <laughs> from what we can see, they signed J. Ron, right? So that's one out of the three. And then they put an offer. They put an offer for KZ. Now, he just got to determine whether or not he's going to. But what he's doing is, let me, let me just see what the line's talking about. I'm going to leave no, no stone unturned as well. They may offer me a million dollars more, right? That is the common sense, but I know common sense is not, not common these days, right? It is what it is. Law, they are confused, John. Yeah, John, they confused, right? John, I know you back in your days, bro. You know, you invite over to your house. What you, yeah, I just ain't going to eat oodles and noodles. You know, you done walked her down in the mall. You done called her out and, and you done took her out on multiple dates and you invite her over to the house. What you going to do? Y'all just going to watch Netflix or you going to chill? You know, you you trying to get to something, right? That, that's your intentions. And, I, and John, I know you may be a smooth operator, but you guys get what I'm saying, right? <laughs> Chuck says law left out break it down baby I, I just gotta break it down in smaller terms because I don't want people to just I don't want a few because it only take a few bad apples to spoil a bunch I don't want a few bad apples to sully and denigrate and disrespect law you know they disrespecting me with the comments in there in my last video or my previous other previous video oh he's lying well 
neither here nor there. Let's go to uh, uh, this, this situation right here. One of the greatest scouts of all times, somebody that I got a chance to meet twice in my life, somebody that I, I just, just, I just froze solid when I met him. One of the greatest intricate parts of the Dallas Cowboys, Gil Brandt. Gil Brandt is one of the marvelous guys that we just got to give him a round of applause. We do. Because when you think of a man of his age and of his caliber to have the great recall who can still call his, uh, his draft sheet all the way from the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and in the 90s, he just got that type of recall. He got his top 100 list, and this is going to be a slow grind right here. I got, 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 got some seconds with you guys. And we're going to go over Gil Brandt, uh top 100 list. And this is he got a 1.0, so he kind of preferenced it a little bit, and I feel him on that. You got to have 1.0 and 2.0. Just, just, just in case 1.0 don't stick, you got to continue to go with it. You know what I'm saying, Cowboy Nation, right? <laughs> but y'all bear with me while I um, while, while I set this up right here. But you guys can look at this this, this top list right here. Uh, I'm going to stop it about right here, and we'll go over there while I set up something right quick. I forgot to set this up, y'all, but y'all bear with me, man. I really appreciate y'all. Let's, just, let's jam into this one, right? Come on. While I set it up, baby. Come on. Watch how that bass line jump in. Bass line for your mind. Here we go. Come on. Take me long at all. Not long at all. Here we go. Hey. take that long it didn't take that long appreciate you kt appreciate you kd k's in the house man i got three k's king beerus appreciate you man thank you for jumping in always a lady not sometimes a lady always a lady certain look good let's go cowboys yes he did oh yes he did appreciate you shout out to always lady let's pump it up for always a lady baby yeah come on come on Watch how that bass line come in. Watch it. Here you go. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Get on up that hill. <laughs> All right. So enough of that. Uh, appreciate you always, lady, though. Uh, we got Trevor Lawrence. He is the number one on my guy, Gil Brandt's list. Shout out to Trevor Lawrence. Uh, Sewell, he's number two. Uh, but let me read. Let me just, I'll do a little reading. My Hooked on Funny guys are working a little bit tonight. Lawrence was a winner at high school, uh, captured two state champions in Georgia. I didn't know he was from Georgia. He was a winner in college. Oh, wow. And securing a title in his freshman season at Clemson. That was his freshman year he was doing that? Hmm. Shout out to all of the uh, draft wids, uh, wizards out there and all of the uh, college wizards out there. Uh, and I think he will be a good NFL quarterback. And that's what he said. So basically he was saying that he was a winner. He was a winner, winner, chicken dinner in uh, high school, college, and now it is the pros. Let's see if he can keep that going. Uh, to me personally, he looked like Chris Collinsworth to me. You know, just, just look at him. I just can't get Chris Collinsworth out of my mind. Uh, Sewell. Uh, Sewell is the closest thing of a Hall of Famer, Jonathan Ogden. Okay. Uh, so he's calling Sewell Jonathan Ogden. Oh, wow. Hey, do y'all see that number two on y'all list right there? Any word, Kurt, uh, on um, Malik Hooker? Malik Hooker said he had a great, he had a great day today. And uh, it may be a situation where as he go home, he talk to his wife and kids, whatever, if he have them, and he, he, he measure everything out and see if the contract is worthy of him playing for one year or two years. And I believe this is just my, this is just my prediction. I believe that he will sign the contract that they're offering. 
it may not be the, 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 the biggest of the biggest, but he might be looking at it like, okay. Let me sort these things out. Let me talk to Ezekiel Elliott. Let me talk to, you know, let me talk to all of the Ohio Buckeyes, you know, people that play for Ohio State and these sorts of things. And let me uh, iron this thing out. All right. So this six foot six, 240 pound kid, uh, Cal Pitts, he's number three on this particular list. Now you guys see the pattern offense, 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 right? So that may be good because we need what? Defense, 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 defense. So what what he have with Kyle is is that uh, Pitts would be a mismatch problem, right, for anybody who plays against him. Can I read that again? Shout out to you, Natasha. Appreciate you for jumping in, Natasha. And Christ, appreciate you. Uh, So can I read that again? Pitts would be a mismatch for anybody who plays against him. Did he say somebody or he said anybody, right? He said anybody. He got great speed. Did he say good or great? Uh, shout out to you, King, man. Free James Black out of Facebook jail, man. Yeah, y'all free him, man. Uh, so is that a great speed or good speed? He says great. And he says he can play inside or outside. Oh, wow. Oh, really? So when Law Nation did his film assessment in my film, uh, uh, evaluation for the nation. When I say he can play inside and out, he got great speed at the top of the route. He know how to bend. He know how to give give inside. I believe that that comes from the fact that the kid used to be a quarterback, and I think that he still know how the route should be ran. And on top of that, from a quarterback to a wide receiver, he was asked to do tight end. So he got three layers of this thing. And to be a quarterback, you got to be knowledgeable of the field you got to understand the field I believe going to uh Trayvon Diggs what helped him out tremendously is because he used to be a quote-unquote wide receiver and of course he had to match up against his brother for many of years so that what helped out our guy Trayvon Diggs so people got to understand that when you when you have skills and they are transferable like transferable knowledge Man, it's crazy. Uh, look at this. Another fourth, the fourth uh, ranking guy is Jamar Chase, not the bank, because he's always open. <laughs> this Jamar Chase, man, uh, fantastic kid. I'm telling you, man, everybody that came out in the draft last year as it relates to DB play, he burnt them. <laughs> he burnt them up like, like toast. And that Jamar Chase, he will be landing on a team if it's the right system. Man, oh, man. Man, oh, man. Uh, Zach Wilson, he got him as the number five guy. Has a great year. Had a great year. He's very athletic. He's an excellent long ball thrower. And he's smart. Uh, that, that is, given that this kid is smart, he, he can throw the ball pretty good. Uh, I, I would like to see him on a team in a perfect system. I don't want him to go to a crazy team. You won't be able to get all of the stuff. Uh, Vera Tucker, this USC kid. Hey, he got him at number six. Do you see the trend, Cowboy Nation? Sean, appreciate you, man. Thank you so much uh, for your thoughts there. KD, he says, you the man. No, nah, man, y'all the man. And, Sean, no, nah, you guys are the best in the business, man. I really appreciate you. Uh, why we got rid of uh, Alden Smith, uh, Jessica, I have no earthly idea. They said it could be uh, alluded to off the field issues and things like that. But I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole of, of, of digging through the Joneses and their thoughts. But we did luckily had a guy named Lucky Whitehead who uh, lamented some of the things that was very nefarious. But I'm not going to get into details. Y'all see what happened when you make a, a person with a lot of money upset. They ain't finna watching me, so I'm gonna keep it moving, uh, and y'all can fill in the other gaps of what I'm saying. All right, so Justin Fields, I like Justin Fields. He's six foot two. Fields, who transferred from Georgia and played two years at the Ohio State, right? Uh, can move up the list, uh, up on his list. He if he has a great workout at Ohio, so he's waiting on when his Ohio pro days are. You know, let me know. Uh, Rashawn Slater, some people have him at 10. Some people have him at 10, Rashawn Slater. 
Um, so it could be a situation. It could be a situation. What is, What are the trends, Cowboy Nation? Do you guys see? Do you guys see any defensive players? Um, do you guys see any defensive player? All we can do is pray for Alden. All we can do is pray for the pray, pray for the kid. And I'm not going to get into details of everything, but just pray for the brother and hope that he can land on his feet. Y'all always know, uh, prize fighter continue to swing even when he's down. And if they say you fall, try to land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. And uh, those are tr- true words right there. Uh, just like LP Lattersore. Didn't do nothing wrong for this organization. Didn't have no issues, right? But all of a sudden, he's gone. You know, sometimes it's time to move on. And I hope that the kid that's going to fill his shoes, that we don't know his name. I hope that that's the case in the scenario. Let me repeat. I hope that we don't know his name. You know, (laughs) I hope that we don't even get a chance to say, hey, Wait, what was that? You know, <laughs> because LP Lattisor, that was his, what's his real name? Luis Felipe Lattisor. We didn't even have to know his name. Barely can remember his number. Number 91, right? It's on the 30th. Appreciate you, uh, Santi. All right, so let me go down this list. We still, we still don't see any defensive guys. Who do y'all predict will be the first defensive guy on this particular list before I move down? Uh, let, who, 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 who do you guys predict? Hmm? Let me see if I can get y'all some music. Let's see who y'all predict, man. Huh? Y'all hit that like button. Come on. Share this thing. Shout out to all the notification gang. Sir Tang. Who's the second person on this list, man? Without using your cheat notes. Who's the second person on this list? Who's the second person? Sir Tang, he's number one. He's a spoon cone right now, man. You know how it goes, you know. Yeah. Zachary says, no way. I'll pick horn at 10. Farley. Okay. I've been. I see some football, see some football guys out here. I know y'all couldn't wait to read up on this article. All right, so Devontae Smith, uh, he's the Heisman Trophy winner. I can't go into details even more. He's at nine for your mind, huh? Uh, Waddle, five foot nine ish, one hundred and eighty pounds. He's fast too. Has a midseason injury, broken ankle uh, that forced him to miss six games. Uh, that said, it is, uh, he has speed and quickness and very good returning specialist. Yeah, Jay Lombardi, you already know. Uh, let me know. Let me know if you guys had a choice between Devontae Smith or Jalen Waddle. Who would you go with and why? All right, Jalen Phillips is the first defensive guy gone. Y'all see that? Uh, I don't see certain name here. But Jalen Phillips, uh, six foot four, two hundred and sixty-five. Uh, he's a pass rushing abilities. He just need to stay healthy. This kid, man, it just, is this something with the Jalen's? You know, they can't stay healthy. But um, y'all look up his tape. Y'all look up his, uh, his 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 abilities. I don't think that the Cowboys, even if they doing best player available. Have the longitude nor the latitude, Michael Osborne. Appreciate you for jumping in. Have the longitude or the uh, latitude to pick up a Jalen Phillips. That's just me saying, right? Uh, Michael Parson. How do y'all feel about Michael Parson? I think that his uh, off-the-field stuff and, and the reports that's coming out, although this is a ranking based off surely, surely uh, talent there, uh, and, and not what teams need right here. So don't get it twisted, Cowboy Nation. This is not uh, a draft ranking. This is just players' ability ranking. Uh, you see that, you know, it's, he's at 12, but he could be a guy that drops into the second round. 
because of the off field stuff and a whole bunch of other stuff that came out and kind of studied the man's name. Uh, Trey Lance, one of the better quarterbacks I've seen throw the ball around. I know he get a bad uh, older because of his uh, previous uh, contemporary who threw the ball for that same team. But he's six foot three, two 225. That's solid. Lance is a strong thrower, man. Yeah, you see, he, he got – let me highlight this. <clears throat> let me highlight this. He's a strong – Strong, you know, he's strong, uh, but not particularly good scrambler given his height, his, given his average speed. Uh, that said, uh, he's been very successful, he just has it. He's something special, he's something special. Do y'all like Trey Lance <laughs> with the 10th pick? <laughs> the Dallas Cowboys select Trey Lance. <laughs> I can see some people flipping some tables over, like, ah, oh, motherfucker, we need defense. <laughs> I can see some people balling their fists, moving stuff around. We got Dak Prescott, we don't need Trey Lance. <laughs> I can see some people moving some furniture around in their house, boy. I can hear the Dallas Cowboys fans booing like they booed, uh, the, the, uh, I guess, the Eagles fans when they booed McNabb. Y'all remember those days? Yo, 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 chill. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to you, Jay. <laughs> yeah, we don't need. I'm just saying. I'm just saying if they do decide to draft a Trey Lance, I know how people will be moving furniture around. All right, so Patrick Sertain, he's six foot two, two hundred and three pounds, whose father is oh not yet yeah, Patrick Sertain as well, enjoyed a long NFL career, right? He is very good in coverage, mm -hmm. skills, and is a smart player. Smart player is the type of player that if you show me one time. I can match it and I can take it away from you. All right, let me read uh, some hands in the uh, chat here. Who all played either defensive back or uh, wide receiver in middle school or high school or college or, or even the pros if you're watching? Who played, just give me a, a yep or yes or something like that, a why, if you played either defensive back or – wide receiver mm, kz is a is a cornerback hooker is a free safety I, I see you george all right so kd he played uh one of those positions right uh zach he played it okay all right so all right let me let me talk to you guys i'm talking to i'm talking to my dbs and my wide receivers now you know everybody else y'all just sit back to the side and enjoy the show right <laughs> just play with y'all all right so in this type of conversation right here, wide receivers have certain releases. Certain releases that they do, and it's just tendencies. Believe it or not, like Ripley's, even the greats got tendencies with their release. Whether it be striking, stepping too hard into a, to the, with their feet, whether it be a chop, three steps some like to do a long deep step sway the hips and off the jam off the jam you don't want to be caught or off in the press you don't want to be caught gazing misdirected or redirected and every every defensive back would tell you the truth that hey man they got me uh, he got me off his release. He got me with his inside foot. He got me with his pelvic. You know, that's why you train to look at certain areas. You know, Clay Mack, he teaches young DBs to look at the vocal cords of a wide receiver. Ain't that something? Look at the neck. Don't even stare at the chest. I said, like, whoa, man. Because he said those those vocal, like when you turn your pivot, it will give indications of where you're going. Um, some coaches, coach, man, whether even if you try to pivot your head, a body in motion stays in motion. If you can get inside that cylinder and when they pivot, that's when you jab inside. 
man, I'm talking technical to you guys. I really don't do it on my film session as much because I don't want it to go over people's heads as much. But when we get into the technicals of, of it, you got to be smart. You got to be you got to be cognitive enough to know that, man, if it's a three step, this is where he's going to pivot inside. Oh, man, if it's two step, man, I see him going out on the outside, baby. Oh, he got me. He got me in the first quarter. Wait till he do that around again. I'm jumping it. <laughs> it belongs to me, baby. And when I catch it, when I catch, and that's why the DBs dance when they get in the end zone. Because he said, man, that hard work paid off, baby. That's why I'm going to give him a little wiggle move because I, you know how you hungry or you starving for something? You finally get that meal and you want to dance a little bit. That's why the DBs dance. That's why they want to show up. That's why they want to really tell the world, yeah, I use you and I abuse you. Yeah, it's because you caught about five passes. Yeah, you caught about, a, you know, you caught, you caught your 60 yards or what have you. But that one INT erased all of that, baby. Uh, Kerry Teagle says, uh, uh, Cooper got the sweet feet, man, baby, don't he? Don't he? And if you look at Coop, the way, look, his tendencies, he don't, he never reaches out completely. He do a subtle, he do a subtle uh, movement with his shoulder or his hand, and you moving out the way, you getting out the way, and he's so quick, he's out, he's out of his stance just that quick. His release is just nasty. His release is so nasty, Cowboy Nation, that even Tyreek Hill said, man, I wish I had his release. If you think I'm lying, Google Tyreek Hill versus T.O. And he was talking to T.O. He said, man, what you working on? Man, I'm trying to get like Cooper. I'm trying to get like a Amari Cooper because his release is so nasty with it. Just nasty with it. And the NFL been hating on him because at the top of the route, he do this subtle shook. Man, ask, look, let's be real. What's the kid that played for the uh, Saints? Is it Lattimore? Was it Lattimore? Mari Cooper burnt him twice. Twice, twine. Because on the streets, they'd be like, nah, dog, you just got burnt. But the aficionado said, hey, P.I. against Cooper. This is the funniest thing of it all. That the guy was still engaged with him beyond five yards. It's supposed to go the other way. But Amari Cooper is just that wet with it. Oh, my goodness. Um, is it Marshawn Lattimore? Shout out to Marshawn. He's one of the dogs, man. I love him. But but a Cooper got him, man. I got to call a spade a spade. But I know that a lot of people are going to say, nah, he locked him down. And I wish, and I know that I'm going to get some hate from this. I wish that it was on an even playing field with Cooper versus Gilmore. And I love that matchup. I love that battle. I would love to see that battle on the turf. I would love to see Darius Slay again on the turf, on the real field or what have you. But even though people would look at it and say, well, Slay, man, he locked up Cooper. No, nah, man, I just like, look, I just want to see some one-on-ones, man, during training camp and stuff like that. I wish, I wish, we could just turn the injuries off and we can just have a camp with just wide receivers versus DBs. Make it 30 minutes, man. Yo, man, that'd be nice. But nevertheless, uh, Caleb Farley, Farley overcame early injuries in his career to become top cornerback, recorded six picks in 2009. Well, in 19 passes, passes defense, uh, and 19 passes defended. Okay, yeah, bat, bat, passes bat down, basically. And 2008 through, through that 2019. Uh, Caleb issue is that uh, news re- is reported from Brian Broaders that this kid is not that bright. He don't, he don't really understand the field, but he got his crazy instincts. And instincts can only last you so long, right? And, and I, and I kind of liken that to the uh, movie Drumline. But this is his top 15. And then Jason... Uh, is his number 16, the uh, the, the edge guy, uh, Darishaw. He's number uh, 17. Morich is one of my guys right here. I I I, I know. I know that uh, a lot of people. <laughs> Jay Lombardi said a lot of more only play when he want to. Yes, Hebrew Israelites, man. Shout out to us, man. That's us, T.A. Appreciate you, T.A. Uh, uh, Mari Cooper also made... That corner from Philly, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've got his name too. I think it's Ronald, right? Darby. Um, 
More rich. He's number 18, Cowboy Nation. He's number 18. So Morich have the ability to play both coverage against the run. And, and I like the fact that he can play with that against that run. Uh, he should start from a long time to help whoever he ends up with. So my thing is, he's a solid pick. I know that uh, people, a lot of people like Richie Grant. And, and I see that Richie Grant got unbelievable ball awareness, unbelievable skill. He could track the ball. Uh, did they have their pro day already? Y'all let me know. What was his numbers, his measurables, and all of that stuff? If and I know it could be unofficial, but let me know if Richie Grant had his pro day already. Um, but he is what he is. All right, the son of the NFL, Joe Horn, J.C. Horn, has an outstanding quickness, right? And I thought that he was more, I thought that he was more quick than fast. But now I see that the kid is a four three nine for your mind. We waited all the way to the nineteenth pick. Why is this important? Why is this so important, Law, to get all the way to the 19th? This is not the 19th pick, but the 19th drafting order of, of levels of consistency grades from the mighty Gail Brandt. Why is this important? Why 19 is so important, Law? Well, the reason why it's so important is because with the 10th pick, if you got a gang of players, because y'all know how this thing goes. Once a one offensive guy goes, another team start panicking, and they say, man, that's my other guy that I really want. And now that tenth pick becomes valuable. It can become so valuable that it could be a situation where the Dallas Cowboys can be captain, quote-unquote, trade down, and, and they can trade back from that tenth pick and maybe, just maybe, pick up either one of these guys it could be a Morridge. it can be a horn it can be the uh the certain kid we need help in those departments it could be that this back situation with caleb farley y'all just hear me out i seen the craziest things happen in the draft uh whereas people thought that aaron Rodgers was going to be the first pick or the second pick or the third pick he ended up getting picked at the 24th or the 25th the cowboys passed up on him by the way but a lot of teams passed up on him because they said hey we didn't like the way his throwing and his release of the ball was it was a lot of things that he had to overcome but they saw the talent but they didn't believe in the talent so that could be said for the same situation for Caleb Farley. People see the talent, but people are like, ah, uh, I'm not going to touch it. I might turn to a pillar of salt. I'm not going to turn back. You know, I'm not going to do with this type of situation with Caleb. I'm just going to move on. It could be a numerous of other teams to do the same thing with the same psyche and say, okay, well, we would rather pick up such and such, right? And Caleb can fall to the second. I've seen this type of stuff happen, right? Whereas the Cowboys may be thinking that we're going to get this. We fool around and trade back a little bit. We have, what, two picks in the second or three picks in the second. It could be flat out that you get Caleb and J.C. Horn or or the uh, Christian Barmore kid or the Alex Leatherwood. There's so many options for this team to do. And keep this in mind. The teams that's really dancing in the free agency. So it's April 1st. Appreciate you, man. So April Fool's Day, I'll be really, really glued in to quote unquote Richie Grant because I really want to know what he can do, right? I just don't want the brother to run a four six and I know that he won, but 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 I just don't want to run a four six or a four seven or something like that. It could be good for us if he do, but that's a story of a different day. It could be a situation, Cowboy Nation, that when we look at all of these things, the world, the sky is the limit. Uh, shout out to everybody that's watching. Who's a big fan of Zavin Collins, right? Who's a big fan of this kid? Because he's a monster himself. He is a monster. Uh, what's up with you, Cali Cowboy? Appreciate you. From the 805. Yeah, appreciate you. Um, oh, uh, uh, this is the point that I was going to bring up. The other teams that sign in these free agent picks, it could obscure their drafting situation too. If they may have different philosophies, we only banging on the table for best player available because we think that the Joneses should do that and that will be the best philosophy. Not all teams draft that way. Some teams get greedy and they draft for needs. Some teams panic draft. And some teams like the uh, – 
the Eagles. They they just draft to be in spite of, you know, in spite of or be spiteful. Yeah, yeah that's how I can say it. Yeah, be spiteful for a certain team. So uh, you got that game to be played. And I don't know all of the conferences like that as far as the rivalries and things. That could be a trickle-down effect that other teams do that so that they can sell it to waters for somebody else. And then you end up looking at this draft and you're sitting there looking like, man, Man, oh, man. Uh, who you taking out of this? <laughs> Chris Davis, appreciate you for jumping in. He says uh, you're taking this list as the Bible when uh, we have Jason Unwu at 15. Uh, I, I think you just must have just came in in the tail end of it. Um, <clears throat> this this is not the list like I, like I lamented earlier, Chris. Uh, this is not the actual list of players that's going to be drafted. But what I'm saying is that when you look at Gil Brantz and you look at what he'd been doing, man, for all like his his accolades, his resume, his temperance and his knowledge of the game goes further than most scouts. And he's been on the money. It's, it's been a different story. If this was like, let's say, for an example, if we go up and I appreciate you, Chris Davis, you always ask us some objective uh, questionings there. And I really appreciate you. Let's say if this was Skip Bayless' hot 100 list, you know, it would have been a different angle, Dan, right? It wouldn't, it wouldn't hold no weight. I wouldn't even – I would just look at this thing and be like, ah, uh, let me keep it moving. And trust me, you know how this world is? Skip Bayless made more money than Gil Brent can ever count, basically. Skip Bayless is making hands over fists and, and money does not equate to validation, but you guys get how this goes. When you validate it with money, it, it takes you a little bit further than a lot of things. People get to see you and know you. But the thing is, when people know substance and they know stuff and they feel where this person is more validated as relates to knowledge, People tend to say, hey, it doesn't matter what this person make. It doesn't matter what this person do. I would rather listen to this person because at least I know I'm get the truth. If I can make that make any sense, you know, because people would know Skip Bayless because he's on a major network. But Gil Brandt, it take a selective few, right? Take a selective few to understand like his like his his role in the Dallas Cowboys, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. Speak it until it exists. Yes, Jay Lombardi, appreciate you. Horn and Diggs, pick it, it, pick it, pick it, pick it, poison. Yeah, pick it, poison. Yeah, Dwight, I feel you on that. Uh, Skip Bailey suck jumping on the jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah, <laughs> but man, he sucks so bad that ES not ESPN, but uh, wherever he's working at now, say, hey, here's thirty two million dollars. <laughs> and believe it or not these type of shows that most people watch it would it wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for the the skips and the uh the, the uh what's this guy named Stephen a smith the shea sharps of the world those type of formats and uh what's the guy from cold peace i forgot his name is the tip of my tongue but all of those guys you know remarkable stuff good good fake wrestling type of banter right <laughs> Skip Network is 17 milli. Yeah, it's a lot of money, Sean Carter. And that's what the people reported, right? Uh, so let's look at, I'm going to do at least the top 25 because it's 11 o'clock where I'm at. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's go, let's go, let's go. J.C. Horn, Zaven College, uh, Taven Jenkins. Yes, uh, that's a good tackle there. Uh, let's move Gregory Russo, uh, 22nd. Man, uh, six foot seven. I didn't know he was six foot seven. A tall kid, Kelvin Joseph, six foot two, two hundred pounds, transferred from LSU. Amazing ball ability. Uh, uh, and this, these sorts of things. Check out Kelvin Joseph, man. Check him out, Mac. Who Jones? He may be the surprise quarterback out of this draft, believe it or not. Like Ripley's six foot two, two seventeen. My only thing is when you look at it and you pivot, you say, man. I can do that. I can do that with the host of weapons that he had, right? I can do that, you know, but we'll see what this kid do. 
Who knows? He might fall on a team that got some dogs, man. You just never know. Christian Barmore. Barmore is going to be dangerous threat as a defensive tackle. My thing is his get off is crazy. I kind of liken him to um, uh, <laughs> y'all remember Chris Jones, right? He kind of puts you in that mind frame, but he, he's one of those guys that you will have to sit back and say to yourself, man. This kid with the 25th ranking out of this list, he just may be that guy. Uh, Harris, pretty good running back. I don't see the Cowboys dipping their toes in that. Uh, Tyson Campbell, kid is just grease lightning fast, six foot. I know this is wrong. Ain't no way in the world he got. They got the wrong measurables. <laughs> Ain't no way in the world he's six foot six around his bug. <laughs> Uh, he's not six foot six. I think he's like six three ish or six two, uh, mid six two, six six two, uh, six two to six three ish. Y'all look up Tyson's measurables, man. Y'all put it in the comment box. Let me see what y'all got over here, man. <laughs> Ain't no way in the world he's six foot six, man. Unless he had one hell of a growth spurt, right? Clay, what's good with you? John says Stephen A is better with the NBA. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. If Pitts fall to 10, the Cowboys, let's roll. Yeah, I knew he was like six foot two. Appreciate the truth only. He said, man, ain't no way, you know. See, see, he got it wrong, y'all. Gail Brandt got it wrong, man. He got him six foot six. I'm quite sure that Gail Brandt didn't write this out as well. Uh, Et is a five ten two twelve solid guy, man, solid guy. Uh, Pete, I like this kid, Pete. I like him. I like the uh, Shaz too from Carolina, but uh, can play against the run and or in space. And is there possible he could be the fast fast enough to serve as a safety? I like Pete. Y'all like Pete? Y'all let me know if y'all like Pete. Google says he's six <laughs> two. Levi. I'm Ruzarike. I hope I said that man's name right, but he's six foot three, two ninety-ish, and I believe he's a Cowboy fan. By the way, uh, that, the Dallas product is very strong and athletic, and exceptionally a run stuffer. When I when I did the film assessment on him, man, um, <clears throat> I like. Let me just be real with you guys. I like Aleem McNeil. I like what Aleem McNeil brings to the table. And I like this kid, Levi, and I kind of got them, like, touching, you know, touching, like, side by side. And, and my thing is what Levi does is, although I've seen him line up over the center, right, and, and the type of system that they have, I just like the way his get-off is just so crazy. And he don't have a lot of moves because he's going from the inside, but he's got those long arms, although he's 6'3", but his arm length is so long. And the way he stopped the run, he got this momentum builder about himself. And I don't think that that would be his solid plan weight, 290. I think that when he get into the NFL level, when all he had to focus on, because he's working his you-know-what off down here in, in Texas, he worked his butt off. Not saying that the other guys are not. But I think that he's going to play, in my opinion, around the weight of 305-ish. He's going to get at least another 15 pounds on that frame. And and right now he looks like a tweener. I mean, you can see that. Sometimes he have difficulties uh getting those pad low. He got to he got to keep that bend, got to keep that bend in there and he got to stay in motion sometimes. I, I, at t at times I look at him that like even though he got some of that grit to him, but sometimes I, I'm not going to call him a loafer. I'm not going to say he they took plays off because I only got a chance to watch about three three games out of him, and that's not enough to validate everything that I know of him. And when you move from the college level to the pros, there's no more studying. There's no more staying up late at night trying to figure out this thing for a test. All you got to focus in on is just football. So there, there are ways where we can look at it. Levi's a three tech though, yeah, and misused playing the one tech. Yeah, but when when coach, when, hey, hey, the beast, when, when coach said, "Hey, man, I need you at one," and you trying to get them playing time out there so the scouts can see you. I'm playing one, coach. I'm playing one. <laughs> I'm play down inside. Uh, Jonathan Williams, he's pretty dope as well. 
Uh, let me move on. Arize, Arize um, Ojolari, let's see what he have. He's an edgy guy and be very good at pass rushing despite the lack of size. The size, yeah, 250. Basham. Now, this is the cousin. He, he's not the brother because we got his cousin on the team, right? So, Carlos Basham Jr., hey, he got pass rushing ability. And he can get around that edge, and you can see he's six foot three, two hundred and eighty one pounds, and he can bend that shoulder, and he can get to the opposition. Quitty pay at thirty four. That's not bad. While I'm reading all of this, the craziest thing of it all, Cowboy Nation. We we could possibly, from this number from one all the way to the thirty four, can get three of these guys that I'm mentioning. Somebody that I'm mentioning out of these names will have silver and blue on. It's somebody. It's somebody that I'm mentioning. Like it could be Samuel. It, it can be Kadarius Tony. It could be all of these guys. And it'd be a stretch if it's Kadarius Tony. But you guys get what I'm saying. It could be Landon. And I don't think that it could be Landon. But, you know, let me move on. Pat, Pat, pretty good too. Shout out to him. He's full, full and through and through. Uh, a tight end, tight end guy, you know, good size and, and good blocker. Good, good guy. Uh, Chiron, he's pretty good. Let's move. Here you go. Here you go. 40. 40. Uh, John, what he says, uh, Law, why the Cowboys going to put Neil? Let me just do, let me, let me entertain some of you guys' questionings here. Uh, we can have the Basham brothers, <laughs> okay, money. It could be. Uh, and, I, and this is an interesting question here from John. He says, Law, why the Cowboys going to put Neil as linebacker? Well, my thing is the NFL changed a lot, right? We play a lot of nickel. And with that being said, I, I'm just going to see what's on your mind when I say this. When it's nickel, I want to know. Y'all help me out. I'm just going to play kind of slow a little bit. When it's nickel, how many DBs do you have on the field? Y- y'all help me out. I-, I don't know. I don't know that questioning. I don't know that answer there. How many DBs do you have on the field when you plan nickel? Questioning. I, I need to have uh, 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 that, that, that little thriving noise when, it, when, when, when that's happening. Let me see if I can find one of those Jeopardy music or something like that. How many DBs do you have? <laughs> And I see K Money says five. Robinson says five. Clay says five. D Garrett says four. Uh, I forgot about Tony yet. I feel you. Uh, uh, Adolf. Uh, Adolf says five, 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 five. Okay. All right. So he, here's the situation. You have five. So when you say you have five defensive backs, that's five, right? You got 11 players completely on your team. So with that being said, you have four down linemen, right? What's five plus four? Y'all help me out with that. Mm-hmm. Five plus four. So that leaves you with how many linebackers? Appreciate you, Sean. Thank you so much for making the donation. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so that's nine, right? All right? I see you, Tucker. Appreciate you. I see you, AAM. Appreciate you. Education for the nation. So, when we play nickel, we only got two linebackers. All right? Hear me out. The center on the opposing side, majority, he calls the lion protection. He calls out. Who, 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 let me see this. Let me see who played football. Who do this? <laughs> yes, indeed. Rue, Rue Glock is a law leading math class. Who do the center calls out <clears throat> on the defense? Who do the center point out on the defense? Let me see if y'all know this one. Who do the center calls out on the defense? Who he's looking for? 
Let me see. I wish I, I need to have some J, Japanese music. <laughs> okay, money. I like it. You know, it used to have pros. Okay, the mic. So he calls out the mic. Okay, so he calls out. So so the center. He. That's why a center is so important. He touches. The, he's the only player that's on the field that's going to touch the ball, a hundred percent of the time. He's always going to touch the ball, right? That's why the center to the quarterback exchange must be a good one. And the quarterback must trust the center because he got to put his hands where his, where his manhood is at. <laughs> so he points out the mic. He makes the necessary adjustments. Now, some 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 advanced centers can can do a whole bunch of other things, right? They, they make the adjustments. They they, they, they they transfer all of that information over to the, to the, uh, the left and the right of them. And they got a certain cadence that they do. And and they they are trained to do that, and and quarterbacks makes the adjustments and they play off the centers. But my thing is, reason why I'm saying this is that now if you have Neil and I don't know his knowledge of the game, but you can get so crafty with this because now you can disguise the mic, you can disguise the formation, you can do so many things because you can appear, you can appear, you can appear that it's a a, a nickel. But it's far from being a nickel uh, defense. By him being that hybrid style of player, being able, tr- true for only appreciate you so much for the donation to help elevate this thing, man. Nine ninety nine, just like my dog who ran a four point three nine for your mind. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for your fire content, man. Appreciate you, man, so much. So my thing is, Cowboy Nation. It's a benefit that we got a guy that's a hybrid a little bit that he can come down inside and play linebacker on the weak side who can disguise a lot of things, who they can shield off a lot of things. And the only person that I'm waiting to just say, wake up, wake up. If LVE can get his affairs together, I'm not even worried about the actual Jalen Smith, but I need LVE to be healthy because I want to pair up with the two with the two linebackers on the field because I believe that the coverage ability of LVE is so important. He's six foot five fish, you know, and, and he got subtle speed. He can clog those passing lanes. And I believe in the hearts of hearts that last year by unhealthy LVE, not playing that hook, man, if we can, if we can just take away the middle of the field, that's half of the game. So, I believe if we can, man, if we can get a healthy LVE and you you keep this Neil kid in the situation, whereas they said, okay, man, this is a traditional 4-3 look. No, 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 no. Oh, man, dog, no, no. They, they disguise. It's, a nick, uh, it's picked off. Quarterback read it wrong. <laughs> Quarterback tried to do a, a quick pass through the, through the dig, through, I guess through a drag route in the middle. Oh. We had a lurker. You know, it's so many things, man. So many things that that can help out this team in a major way if health, if we just turn them doggone health health off, you know, the injuries off, turn the, turn the injuries off, man. <laughs> who cheat on Madden? Who plays like that, right? Uh, let's see. Draft boss, man. Yeah, yeah, yes, indeed. Healthy LVE and the Jabril Cox. I like Cox, uh, uh, real Cox. I, you know, d- don't use that as a drop, Cowboy Nation. <laughs> I like Jabril Cox. You know, that is a good situation. Uh, let's go from here. And <laughs> uh, so they say Grant has great ball skills. Need to play this position in his four season of action. He logged 10 picks, 17 pass defense, and five forced fumbles. That means he's all around. K. Muddy, don't, don't crucify me, but appreciate you. Uh, uh, Jabril is one of those guys that he can really he can really ball out there. Uh, he's 5'11", so I can't wait to see what all he display he showcase out there on the field. Uh, Eric Stokes. Mm. Eric Stokes is so nice, man. Uh, Stokes, who ran the 40 yards at less than 4.4 at his pro day. We'll see. 
we'll see what he going to do in the real field. And, and here, here's where I got Stokes. I think that Stokes at six foot one, 190 pounds, he's good. He can play on the outside. But I would really like Stokes, Stokes inside. I, I would like him to be one of those guys that that can can lock up a receiver. Because, you know, a lot of times people kind of discount the slot. But when you land that nickel corner, you got to be able to go left and right. You got to know, you got to have that quickness. And I believe he possesses that, right? Yeah, Stokes got wheels, Jay. Yeah, yeah, he got wheels, man. Uh, Dylan, he's pretty good. Uh, I'm not looking for it. Alex Leatherwood, he's way down here. See, I, that's why I believe Alex Leatherwood could be in the second. But I'm not saying that this is the uh, actual list of draft picks in, in order, but I think that Alex Leatherwood can. You can grab him in the second. Matter of fact, I'm with the belief that you can low-key with all of the compensatory picks that we got, we can trade back into the second and still dance around and get some of these guys. Uh, what would you guys do if you say, okay, the Cowboys decided to dance with a little bit more fire and they go out there and they pick up Jeremiah Awusa Koromora. I think that's how you say that name. <laughs> but they go get J.O.K. Uh, from Notre Dame. How do you guys would feel if the Cowboys go and get this guy, Jeremiah uh, J.O.K.? He's a good player, but hell have to move to another position if he can gain some weight. He, he, he get linebackers uh, at a linebacker size is too small for today's game. He's literally he's literally literally the same size as Neil. I think Neil how tall is Neil, Cowboy Nation? How tall is Neil? Is he like 6'1", 6'2"? But I know he's like 216. He's about the same size as Neil, right? Yeah. Elijah, Elijah, Molden is pretty dope too. Yeah, y'all like this edge kid from Texas, man. Just nasty with it. Yeah, see, Neil is six one two sixteen, so they're the same person. Well, not same person as it relates to like you know coverage ability and things like that and what they can do on the field. But Jeremiah, I mean, he hit you. You'll feel it, man. You will. All right, it's 1119. All right, we're going to try to speed through this thing. Uh, Nick Bolton, he's pretty good too. But then again, look, Bolton is a good player versus the run, though he's limited against the passing game. Nick Bolton, Nick Bolton. I seen Nick Bolton looking around. He, they they put <laughs> Nick Bolton, they put uh, Kyle Pitts. They put, like, they literally had Nick Bolton line up against Kyle Pitts, and I said, <laughs> I said, no, 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 no. Shame. I like, nah. Shame. Don't do him like that. Uh, I got JOK over Bolton, though. Uh, I, I would rather have JOK. Who would rather have Bolton, though? Jermaine Davis, okay. Uh, Jimmy Davis, um, yeah, I can see you, but give me JOK. <laughs> Uh, Jimmy, give, give me JOK. Who would y'all rather have, JOK or Bolton? But here's what I don't want people to look at. When this thing trickle down and these players go to a different team, it depends on what team they go to and which philosophy and scheme they go to. Uh, let's go Greg Newsom. Yeah. Ifitu. Melifonwu. Davion Nixon. I am not a crook. I like him too, man. I like Nixon, man. Uh, I really do like him. Uh, let's see. The Marshall kid, he's dope. That's my dog right here. Number 57, Chaz Surratt. He's pretty good. I like him. Creed Humphrey, uh, he, he's another guy that we will be looking into this thing. And and here's, here's the thing is with Chaz. Used to be a quarterback. Used to be a quarterback. Used to be a quarterback. All right, Cowboy Nation, that's all the time that I have for this episode. I really appreciate you guys for jumping around and diving in. I would do some Q&A, man, and listen to y'all questionings here uh, about this particular part of this episode. Let's go to the Q&A portion of it. Um, <clears throat> Jay Lombardi says, Horn over Sertan. Yeah, I feel you on that one. Uh, Marvin Wilson is a sleeper. I agree. Marvin is is a dog to me. I, I like him. He's in this Dallas area right now working out. 
uh, he, he's, he's a whole different type of animal. He got, he got speed. He got quickness. He got strong hands. He can redirect and get upfield. I like that. Um, but it looks like he's more in the mold of a, a, a three right now. And he can give you, he can play over the uh, center, just like a Lane McNeil, big, tall, physical guy, strong hands, crushed down inside, can play through the echoes of the whistle. Y'all don't sleep on Francis Bernard. No, 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 no. KJ is washed. Uh, are you talking about KJ Hill from last year? Or, or which KJ are you talking about? Uh, Law, how about Morridge? Uh, TCU kid, uh, Trayvon. I think, just hear me out. We, we've been having so many issues trying to, to, to have another defensive back on his team that can play safety in a solid way, right? Like, I'm, I'm really waiting on um, my dog, Donovan Wilson, to play it out, right, to showcase to the world that, uh, that we can see him for 17 weeks, right? Instead of us, all of a sudden, when we out of a game, we kind of throw him in and then say, oh, let, let him play the last five games or so. No, I want him to play the entirety of the season. I want to get a good feel and a good vibe from him. I want, I want this communication to be like this on this field. I want Diggs to play off of uh, Donovan Wilson, and I want them to just secure that thing and we don't have to worry about it. I, that's what I want. This is just this is what I want. And I think that if you go out there and you draft a, a more rich guy, then you can you can start develop, developing that. Uh, K.J. Wright. Oh, yeah, you're talking about him, K.J. Wright? Um, yeah, we'll see how all that stuff goes. All right, Jessica, appreciate you. Thank you. You have a blessed night as well. Um, let's see who else. Donovan Wilson is my guy. He is a dog. Yes, indeed. He's a dog, man. Big dog or little dog? Big dog or little dog? He one of these dogs. He a big dog, man. He ain't no little dog. He a big dog. Um, <clears throat> Jay Lombardi says, Morridge or Grant? Ugh. Oh, my goodness. Um, mm, I just... Just give me, give me, give me Trayvon, man. I, I know, I know. Grant is the flavor. He's the sauce of everything. But it's something that I, I, I like. I like. I like his skill set. But I'm not all the way like. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm, I like him though. You know, uh, it, it's just hard for me to pick between the two. But give me, give me the Trayvon Morich, man. And I, and I, I just, I just see Grant ball out on another team somewhere else. <laughs> I know a lot of people, man, y'all love that Grant, man. Oh, my goodness, y'all love Grant. And, and there's nothing wrong about him. You know, he got that skill set, got those uh, situations. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, it's just how it is. I mean, you know, people people have their, their A player and their B player. Um, I want a fast tight end. This is from Nine Dime for your mind. Don't we all, don't, don't we all fail? <laughs> We want that fast. Go get them. We want that fast. Go get them. Go get them, tight end. Take the top off. Put them in a spin cycle. Quinn Deef is going into 2021 Let's now. They They're going to be here. courting, among others, Malik Hooker and DeMonte KZ, formerly of the Indianapolis Colts and the Atlanta Falcons. DeMonte KZ, a former sixth, fifth round draft pick out of San Diego State, knows Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr. very well playing for that Atlanta Falcon defense over the last few years, had a torn Achilles this past season, much like another guy who the Dallas Cowboys are bringing in, Emily Cooker, who also suffered an Achilles tear during the 2020 NFL season. Both of them are ball hawks. Both of them are guys that can make plays on the football and play that prototypical center fielder that you're looking for in a cover three scheme that Dan Quinn appears to be trying to put together for the Dallas Cowboys in 2021. So this is uh, Kevin Gray from 105.3, the fan. Uh, when the video is posted, I'll post a link in the description box so that you guys can follow Kevin Gray. Uh, he giving some points about the Dallas Cowboys uh, hooker as well as the uh, KZ kid. 
uh, of what they would be looking for. And like I said, uh, we signed uh, the uh, the um, the J. Ron Curse kid, and we we picked him up or what have you. So he's more so of a, a special teamers guy. So now we're gonna look into these uh, aspect of KZ. I think that he's gonna go to the Detroit land. He's gonna survey the land, survey their uh, workout facilities, and he's gonna go to the highest bidder. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that if if the Detroit offer him a higher salary or a higher uh, signing bonus, he's gonna sign that signing bonus, or he's gonna call the Cowboys and say, "Hey, this is what they offered." Can you match? And if the Cowboys say, nah, two tears in the bucket, pluck it, you can stay up there in Detroit land, then he's going to be a Detroit Lion. So he got those two things going back and forth with each other. I'm with the belief that if I'm KZ, just hit me out, Cowboy Nation, uh, you got Joe Witt Jr., you got Dan Quinn, it'll make no sense that you go all the way to the Detroit land to learn a whole new defense or an environment that people that you don't trust. And he's naturally from this south or southern area because he played in atlanta atlanta terrain is not that different from dallas man have you guys been up there in detroit it's colder than polar bear nuts man it's cold baby so he's gonna have to measure all all of those things and i think that in the hearts of hearts in the hearts of hearts he may end up staying he might end up calling the dallas cowboys saying all right cool i I, i'll play for the boys I play for my coach, basically. But listen to more what he has to say. DeMonte KZ, a guy at 28 years of age, a little bit older than Malik Hooker at the age of 25, at one point led the NFL with seven interceptions a few seasons ago. Malik Hooker, a product out of Ohio State, a former first-round pick, had some productive years in his first couple of years, but in the last couple where he played in a Matt Eberflus defense where Dallas Cowboys know that name very well, wasn't able to accentuate the strengths that he has as a football player and was not able to be as productive and then couple that with the injuries that he right. had. You can see why Malik Hooker's on the free agent market right now with opportunities from other teams to look at him as a bargain basement type of player in terms of the signing and the money that he could command a very low amount, maybe two to three million dollars for a one year prove it deal. But at the same time, this signals at least in the interim that Dan Quinn has a very loud voice in this room for the Dallas Cowboys, already bringing in Keanu Neal, who has the opportunity to play some weak side linebacker, to play a little bit in coverage, to take Jalen Smith out of coverage, to give this defense a little bit more flexibility, while also bringing the pain at the strong safety position alongside a Donovan Wilson, who his emergence last year for the Dallas Cowboys was a pleasant surprise. So the Cowboys appear, at least on its surface, to be making the kinds of moves that modern NFL folks who watch this team have been begging this team for years to do invest in the secondary specific how do y'all feel about kevin gray man this guy is spitting man he's like twist over here <laughs> I, I wish i could talk that fast man that joker that joker right there is speaking really fast uh i, I think that you know it, it will work out really well um and what kevin gray is saying and this is this is a, an eye raise to the whole situation and scenario that the Dallas Cowboys, at least, even though these are like at the bottom end of the uh, shopping aisle or, or at the, uh, uh, at the targets uh, clearance rack or at the, uh, I guess you can say Burlington co-factors clearance section, you know, and, and you're sitting there like, Oh, okay. Wow. But at least they're showing some type of interest, right? specifically in the back end in terms of safety to try and get this defense better where an average defense in today's modern NFL coupled with a really good offense, you could find yourself making a deep run in the playoffs in the NFC or in the AFC. And of course, for the Dallas Cowboys, the offensive side of the football appears to be intact. You've signed your franchise quarterback and Dak Prescott. You've got Ezekiel Elliott coming back. You believe you have a good offensive line coming back. Yes, with Tyron Smith and Leo Collins dealing with injuries from this past season. But at the same time, you still have Zach Martin, an all-pro right guard there. But more importantly, on the defensive end, can this defense get back to what they were in 2018? More importantly for a guy in Jalen Smith, who will now have some additional help at the linebacker position with Keanu Neal's position flex. But for DeMonte KZ, Malik Hooker, J. Ron Curse, 
whomever the Cowboys decide to bring in, it appears that there's a signal that things are changing from a defensive philosophy standpoint. And it should, especially in a year where the free agency squeeze and the middle class of free agency is getting squeezed due to the salary cap being reduced to the $182.5 million going into 2021. A lot of great talent still available, not only at the safety position, but also at corner. You still got guys like Malcolm Butler and Richard Sherman, among others, that are available. I think Richard Sherman just signed, though, right? Did he sign with the Rams? So this video is a little bit it is earlier today. So uh, did Richard Sherman sign with the Rams? Y'all let me know so I can put that uh, out there uh, so we can stop talking about Richard Sherman. Um, <clears throat> he's going to the Rams, I believe. That'd In be this free agency class at the cornerback position, which the Cowboys still have to address, but the fact that they have already decided to solidify their strong safety position and create some hybrid type of play and position flex with the signing of Keanu Neal while still bringing in DeMonte Casey, Malik Hooker, J. Ron Curse, who could provide some depth for them at the safety position, also some special teams help. You can see the direction somewhat of where this Dallas Cowboys defense is going, at least with the signing of Keanu Neal, it signaled to me that there's going to be a physical identity that the Dallas Cowboys are going to try and develop going into 2021. When you have a hard-hitting safety linebacker type in Keanu Neal, coupled with what Dan Quinn used to have in the Legion of Boom defenses in Seattle with the Cam Chancellors and the Richard Shermans, the Byron Maxwells, the Earl Thomases of the world, a physical smash-mouth defense that could make plays on the ball and turn teams over, creating opportunities for this offense and the Dallas Cowboys specifically now going into 2021 was an opportunity to put a lot of points on the board. We know that last year when Mike Nolan tried to install his hybrid 4-3 scheme. and Yeah, uh, yeah, he going off. Boy, that was... <laughs> All right, so, yeah, uh, the physicality of this particular team, I can see us going in that direction. I love physicality. I, I think that if we got corners that can press and if we got a guy that can thump that's in the center of the field, like a, a Donovan Wilson, make you think twice and sitting there catching that shallow cross route and also your deep drags, you know, you start thinking like, nah, coach, that guy right there, he hitting. Mama said he hitting. No, 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 no. Mama said he hitting, hitting. So we can't, we can't go back there, man. No, nah, no. Nah. So I like that philosophy. But they got to uh, figure this thing out. Uh, let's see. Shout out to your church. And uh, shout out to uh, Tyrone. Uh, he says, uh, appreciate you, man. Uh, he said, KZ not leaving the lines. And Malik Hooker is cheaper. And you can sign him longer. It's cheaper to keep him, right? Um, my thing is, yeah, we'll find out. So I, I didn't know that the Lions, were they offering a good, good deal over there in Detroit? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy. But appreciate you, man, for the donation to help elevate this thing. Uh, the the whole situation with this is I think that Hooker, his ceiling is so high. How old is Hooker? Y'all put that down in the uh, chat box there. And when we say Hooker, we're talking about Malik Hooker, by the way. I don't want this thing to be uh, looked at when we saying bad words. Uh, cash that in. Dak Attack, appreciate you. Uh, Richard Sherman is going to reunite with the Seattle Sea Chickens. Oh, uh, and Tucker Tucker says, and Tyrone's and Allen said he's only 24, 25. So that's still young. Kind and what he was, or 3 4 scheme, and what he was trying to do, and it did not work out well with respect to how this defense played, not having the accountability on defense, missing assignments, Demarcus Lawrence trying to stand up and do things that he wasn't accustomed to doing. You see now that this team and the Dallas Cowboys is getting back to more of a traditional skill set for them based on the players that they have available. Jalen Smith, Leighton Vander Esch, and others I think will benefit from what Dan Quinn is trying to do for them in 2021. And more importantly, solidifying the back end of the secondary with a combination, I think, that you will bring in with DeMonte Casey and Malik Hooker and J. Ron Curse. I believe two of those three players will be signed by the time we get to the end of this free agency period, especially if the things work out physically in terms of the physicals for DeMonte Casey and or Malik Hooker, whomever you decide. I personally would like to see Malik Hooker come in for the Dallas Cowboys. He gives me the Earl Thomas light vibes, if you will, with his ball hawking skills. The more upside to me resides with Malik Hooker at the age of 25. 
yes, both of them coming off the same Achilles injury, but at the same time, running a similar defense that he did at Ohio State with Greg Schiano as their defensive coordinator, getting him back into a system that accentuates his skill sets better than what it did in Indianapolis these last couple of years under Matt Eberflus, I think gives the Cowboys the best opportunity to maximize the potential of a Malik Hooker versus a DeMonte KZ, who, yes, may be a little bit better football player now and the experience being there at 28 years old, but wondering if the upside is still there for him given what you experienced from him over the last couple of seasons with the Atlanta Falcons. To me, you can't go wrong with either KZ or Malik Hooker, but if I'm picking... I'm picking a guy, Malik Hooker, who I know can get his hands on the football, make plays in that back end of the secondary, and would get back into a defense with the kind of upside that he has at the age of 25 to be able to make an impact on this team going into 2021. But nonetheless, it's important to watch the Cowboys continue to move, not only with the terms of the free agency oh, yeah, moves that they're making with Keanu Neal having already been brought into the fold and potentially DeMonte KZ or Malik Hooker, coming alongside but also the signing of Brent Urban along the defensive line one of the good. better interior defensive tackles in the NFL this past season and more important as you look toward the draft after what you saw with Patrick Sertan blazing with a 4 4 40 at his Alabama Pro Day it seems like this defense could be coming into focus especially as Dan Quinn continues to put his imprint on this defense so far this offseason which honestly is a good thing Rob Marinelli's voice was a little too loud several years ago with drafting guys like Taco Charlton over T.J. Watt, but it sounds like the credibility of a guy in Dan Quinn who had a Legion of Boom defense in Seattle also taking a defense to the Super Bowl in the Atlanta Falcons now has the opportunity to really put his stamp on this defense going into 2021 for the Dallas Cowboys. Only time will tell, but it appears that the direction is a good one based on what we've seen so far. The Dallas Cowboys always late to the party, going flea market flipping as they always do uh, when it comes flea market flipping. <laughs> to free agency. But at least it now appears to be signaling the Cowboys may be moving in the kind of defensive direction that Cowboys fans have been wanting for years, not having invested in the safety position in depth in the first round since a guy like Roy Williams way back in 2002. So now it appears the Dallas Cowboys may be heading in the right direction. We'll see. Only time will tell if DeMonte KZ or Malik Cooker becomes the next member of the Dallas Cowboys, remaking maybe the sum of the identity that was missing from the physical, branded, fast type of football this Cowboys team needs to play in today's modern NFL. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports. Be sure to like comment and subscribe to my channel here at Kevin Gray Sports on YouTube and you can also catch me on the weekends with my partner the two-time two-time Hall of Famer Chris Arnold on your home of the Cowboys and Texas Rangers 105.3 The Fan. That joker right there y'all check out Kevin Gray man y'all go to his YouTube page and check out uh, Kevin Gray this, this, this brother man I, I, I never heard of him speak so uh, fluently of this Dallas Cowboys team until now uh, on a, a quick excerpt like that, he, he was like the twister of uh, of uh, sports breakdowns and sports analysis there uh, of his play of words. You know, I, I like that. Uh, he was straight to the point. You know me, I got to rest and I got to give you all storylines and tags and stuff like that. But this brother was like, shoo. <laughs> Oh, man, y'all check out Kevin Gray. Uh, I, I'll find and search out his YouTube page, and uh, I'll post it in the comment box because this brother deserved to uh, uh, to get recognized of, of his uh, acumen of the football game and, and, and of his knowledge and his opinions of this whole uh, situation. Do you guys disagree with any of the things, if you guys could pick up what he was saying? Uh, do you guys disagree with anything? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, Ernest says... Uh, uh, Kevin uh, be preaching Cowboys gospel. You ain't lying. I, shoot, I, I was going to say, hey, man, <laughs> thou shalt about, shall about a Honda, you know. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Cowboy Nation. Uh, um, This dude was like, shoo, 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 shoo. the flash. <laughs> he was with it, baby. He was. Um, <clears throat> and uh, he was right. He was on point. Yeah, I, I like the way he brought up the aspect of uh, being modern day football. Uh, I think that we had so many um, directions that we were going as it relates to the defense. I think our offense is straight. 
I think our offense can still put up 30 to 35 points a game, and that's crazy. If you're just sitting back, sitting there like, yeah, man, my offense can put up 30 to 35 points a game, you're like, what? That should be that should be W's, man. That should be dubs, man. And I know people will say, well, now it's in the third and fourth quarter. Regardless, man, 30 to 35 points a game? Some of y'all down here can't even do that on Madden. But I believe in the hearts of hearts, just being uh, truthful to it, I think we can do that. It's just that this defense, if we can get uh, uh, defense, and Tyrone says, that, nope, yep, I, I feel you, Tyrone. We appreciate you. Uh, AG, the king, yeah, yeah, I believe this, this defense. So we can look back, and I'm not talking about a defense just, just solid, you know. I want a nasty defense. When you roll up into Texas Stadium down there in Arlington, I want you guys to be looking left and right saying, man, it's finna be blood. Blood finna be shedded on the ground, baby. It's, look, we know. We, we know for sure that Donovan Wilson, ooh, we know he gonna lay somebody out. <laughs> and and now you got Neil. Oh, my gosh. You know, and we got both of those boys. And, and whoever we draft, I think that we gonna still draft another. Let's <laughs> Somebody lay the wood, man. Uh, Law, can you see Hooker, Diggs, and Wilson and Sertain, man? Yeah, uh, yes, in Christ. I, I can see that. And I believe, I believe that nobody else got the cojones to really bring in Hooker and sign him, right? But the Dallas Cowboys. I really think that even, even with the KZ kid, he's 174 pounds. Right, that's people in the chat box bigger than him. Right, hundred a hundred and seventy four pounds, and he talking about playing safety. And I seen somebody, I think Chris, he put it out there. He said, "Yeah, man, Ezekiel Elliott ran over him." What do you expect Ezekiel Elliott to do? Zeke Zeke is what two twenty five, two twenty six, and I'm being generous. I think Ezekiel Elliott like two thirty. <laughs> what what's the difference between two thirty and one seventy four? Y'all do the quick math for me. Y'all do the subtraction. Subtractions, y'all do that for me. Uh, Tyrone Church, appreciate you. Did you know that Malik Hooker comp pick was Ed Reed? Oh wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Um, he didn't live up to that expectations. <laughs> appreciate you, Uncle Charles. Thank you so much for being part of this thing and being one of the late night warriors. Zeke is a mini fridge. Yep, yep. Uh, appreciate you always, lady. Uh, I would give up my stimulus. <laughs> to go get J.C. Jackson. Yeah, I kind of just hushed up on the J.C. Jackson, let it be a surprise. I don't think that the Cowboys are going to roll that way. They love draft picks, right? And they dog for sure ain't going to trade nobody to get it unless it, unless they got, uh, you know, some some stuff uh, to their head, you know. And that's the only way we got Amari Cooper. Well, we were three and five at the time, and people were looking at it like, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, Jerry. You got to do something, Jerry, man. We three and five, man. I mean, you got to sell this whole team. And then they went on ahead and did it. They went on ahead and did it. Yeah. What What do Zeke? Uh, he said, what did Zeke do to Malcolm Jenkins, who was an all-pro at the time? This is from Rue Glock. Oh, yeah, he ran over Malcolm. <laughs> yeah, he ran over Malcolm. He made him his baby, too. Ezekiel Elliott did the same thing to Cam, didn't he, Chancellor? Did Ezekiel Elliott run over Cam? Or they just kind of met in the middle, sent Cam all the way off onto retirement that year, right? I just played with y'all. Well, y'all get how this thing go, Cowboy Nation. I really appreciate everybody for jumping in. I thought I'd play that Kelvin Gray segment there uh, just for some fillers there at the end so that you guys can get a good insight of his knowledge there. Uh, that was my first time listening to him all the way, all the way, and he got some juice under him. Cowboy Nation, I think that if we can just focus and put our mind together, man, this thing can go far. And I'm going to wrap this thing up. Really appreciate you guys. Let me play this one. Yeah, I want to jam on out with this one. And I played that one already. Let's do this one. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all feel that one? Come on. Prize fighter. Even when he's down, continue to swing blow. You got to continue to fight, Cowboy Nation. One way or another. 
When the end comes for me, let it find me conquering a new mountain, not sliding down an old one, right? Let's get our head into the right directions. Let's put our minds in the right thoughts. The draft time for your mind is right around the corner, right? And that's right, Jay. Appreciate you at peace. Appreciate you, Rude Glock. Shout out to all of the mod gods. Shout out to everybody that's out here that's supporting this channel, sharing this information, dropping stars. Man, it's crazy that Facebook came up with stars, right? And who we are, we are stars right here, right? And I appreciate Facebook for that, right? Come on, Cowboy Nation. If you want a thing bad enough to go out there and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time and your peace and your sleep for it, if all of your desires of it makes you quite mad enough that you don't get tired of it and it makes you hold all other things tardy and cheap for it, if life itself seems empty and useless without it and all that you scheme and dream is about it, if you'll gladly go out there and sweat for it, fret for it, plan for it, and lose all terror of God or man for it, if you were simply, oh just simply, go out to the thing you want with all of your capacity, Strength and scorgacity with faith, hope, and confidence and stern pertinacity. If neither cold, poverty, or famish, or fame, or sickness, or body, or brain can turn you away from the thing you want. If dogging and grim and proceed and beset it with the help of almighty cowboy nation, like Chris Davis and Chuck and in Christ and Torres, I see you and heal, you will get it. Let's go, cowboy nation. Turn me up. Yeah. Ain't no party like a cowboy party Hey, come on, hey Let's go Cowboy Nation One way or another, hey Y'all rockin' with the nation, baby Y'all rockin' with the nation, baby Let's go Come on already know freeze shout out to the nick appreciate all y'all for jumping in that's been my time we out baby what you tell them hey nowadays nothing really is ice cream. only one of me and nobody's like me phone ringing and i tell them it's ice i got wifey on blinging she ice freeze, freeze. freeze. photo please please no photos no no jeez no 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 please no photos Hit the door and the dome and just whole team here, money some. Still young, but I move like a Veteran. new deal to my lawyer. Though. It if you're down in my management, I'm just warming up a way to lie. Old producer saw the numbers one. Settlement. Different colors in my baggy light. Chalk it up, talk of the town where you're talking up. Wanna get you a ring and you tough enough. Wanna get you new things with your pockets dull. Run it up. I used to be quiet and out of luck. Now I move up and move humble cuz they hate and the jealousy. My mama telling me, count up your blessings and run it up. Nowadays, nothing really is ice cream. Only one of me and no. Like me. Phone ringing and I tell him it's Rice. I got wifey on bling and she Ice. Freeze, Freeze. Photo. Photo. Please. Please. No photos, no no Jeez. Jeez. No, no. no 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 Please, no photos I keep giving game away, I put game on layaway I got paid to play today, I get paid to stay away I get paid on rainy days, I might make it rain today I got paid off pain today, thought it take the pain away in my own lane, finger roll I would never sell my only soul Heard your whole team was for sale Heard it's on the market for the low Who the realest, we might never know All this acting, you gon' play a role Give you the world when they sign you up Try you out and then they line you up Oh! Now you looking hungry, ribs are touching Need some food Shout out to Rue Glock Shout out to, to Daryl, I see you Boy, get out Chris the way, Davis the day, now you're old news Now you got the pen and pay You're trying Tucker. to take my now Uncle day, Charles, Victor Lee, Lee. let's go. One of me and nobody's like me. Phone ringing and I tell him it's Rice. I got wifey on bling and she Ice. Freeze. 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 Photo. Photo. Please. Please. No photos. No, no. Jeez. Jeez. No, no. No. Please. No photos. Nowadays, nothing really is. Ice. Only one of me and nobody's like me. Phone ringing and I tell him it's Rice. I got wifey on bling and she Ice. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best.